Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel, Bolt Forward. So uh, I got bored, did a little arts and crafts project here and I built a little display shelf for ammunition that I've been collecting over the years. So in the current atmosphere of collecting, a lot of people tend to be solely focused on just buying guns. Um, understandably speaking, the, the days of including the bayonet, an ammo pouch, a cleaning kit and all that other stuff is kind of gone as companies either A, piecemeal that out or B, just the supplies of that stuff is pretty much just dried up. But collecting surplus is more than just getting the guns. In fact, there's entire communities and I guess you can call it ecosystems surrounding uh, mill surplus guns that include buying all the odds and ends that go with it. For me, one of the things that I've enjoyed over the past uh, 10 plus years of collecting is I like buying weird and odd looking ammo. And in this video, I just kind of wanted to go over and show off some of the things I've collected over the years. So fun fact, I uh, I don't actually know what all of this is. Uh, some of this has been bought, sealed up, and forgotten, and just we're now getting around to it. I think this is 8 Mauser. I've collected a lot of 8 Mauser over the years. So I've got a 60 on the bottom and a 04 on the top. That could probably mean it was made in April of 1960 or... The manufacturing date was the 60s, and the code for whatever that factory is was 4. But yeah, this is definitely 8 Mauser. It's not on stripper clips. Six five Sweet Ammunition. Uh, this stuff here is the uh, wooden blanks. Uh, the blank pretty much disintegrates under the force of being fired, so it's kind of useless as far as, like, plinking, but it's good brass. You can shoot the blanks and then uh, reload the brass. Some people just pull the blanks out and reload it, and that way they get a free primer out of it. This stuff is some 6.5 Sweet Ammunition, actual military stuff. Unfortunately, it's been written on over the years. That kind of happens. Mm, shiny. Pretty rare stuff. Uh, Jacob is not going to shoot that. So, got some uh, eight-man liquor ammunition here. Uh, made in 1938. Boy, it's so nice when these military companies put information on here for collectors. Uh, all the ammunition is out of these because I have them in an ammo can. Eventually, I will put two, two back into here or buy another one. Patronin. This stuff is kind of interesting. Um, this ammunition I bought just kind of came across it. I think it was $17 for 40 rounds or 32, 32 cartridges. Yeah, that's what the number says. Um, kind of just came across this in an ammo can. Uh, some like old guy. There's always that one old guy at the gun show that has a table and nothing on the table relates to the thing next to it. One of those guys has been collecting at garage sales and... <laughs> God knows where over the years and just puts it all out and doesn't even know what any of it costs. But let's take a look in here. This is a Pakistani 303 British. Manufactured 1953. Eh, smells like a bullet, all right. I don't know if this stuff is dangerous or not. I tend not to trust ammunition that was manufactured in the Middle East due to the amount of sabotaged ammunition that is floating around, but... I've never heard of anybody saying that their face is blown up by shooting this stuff. Now, I do know it's in here. This is Carcano ammunition made in a bologna factory in 1936. Oh, I love these old ammo boxes. A little, little pull tab. Gently, gently. Cardboard is very old. Look at that. E M thirty five or thirty six and B. Well, even the back of the stripper clip has a little bit of information there with some numbers. This is what original Carcano ammunition is supposed to look like—a rounded bullet versus the pointier Spitzer bullet. They even crimped the the, the casing down. That's interesting. I guess they really didn't want that bullet falling out. 
and I'll just sell this at a gun show when I'm 50 or 60 years old for a trillion dollars, then I will be the FUD. Damn it. So funny story behind this. Um, this is eight millimeter Bowser. Pretty confident it's from Greece. Um, but when I bought it at the gun show, the guy was like, oh, this is the SS ammunition. As in, this is what the Nazis used. And I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know that the Germans were manufacturing SS specific. I knew he was, didn't know what he was talking about, but I just kind of had to laugh. I was like, oh man, SS ammo. So, um, the stripper clips are from a Turkish eight millimeter pack I had. This was made in 1939. Fabrique Nacional, so this is FN Herstal 6.5 Man Liquor. And somebody, I think, wrote the Times 54 on there. Um, I don't know what 6.5 Man Liquor is. I don't own a 6.5 rifle like that. But I bought it because I think this ammunition was like $10. It was like a 5.0 at the bottom. We have FN nickel plated bullet here on a stripper clip of some sort. It looks to be correct to that ammunition. This is some French ammunition here. I think I peeled the price tag off. Oh, look, they give you a picture of what it is. Um, it's kind of neat though. It shows five bolts on a stripper clip. Um, this was dirt cheap decade ago i don't looks like we got I mean, this thing comes with quite a bit of information here i wish i understood what was going on uh, i do know it's seven five french that's a factory uh, i'm probably wrong uh but it's on chargers stripper clips this isn't necessarily rare but gp11 ammunition used to be like 40 cents a round it was like Hornady grade sniper rifle laser bullets and was dirt cheap and then one day it all disappeared anytime i buy like bulk ammunition for like old rifles even if it was like super plentiful back in the day i would i would highly recommend to anybody just to save one box or if you come across like a bunch of stuff at a gun show and it's cheap or it's something you want to buy just save one box would it really kill you to not shoot 10 rounds out of a gun you never know it could become a Nice looking display case like this. So they didn't sell bullets and pill bottles, especially not at Walgreens. Oh, we better cover that up. Um, this goes to a Smith & Wesson model of 1913 semi-auto. This is 35 Smith & Wesson, also known as 32 ACP. Um, this ammunition is pretty rare and hard to come by. And when I bought the gun, I guess the previous owner had managed to save two little rounds. And they're in this little pill bottle, which coincidentally fits perfectly right there. So this is Equatorian um, 8 Bowser. I have an open case around here somewhere, but it's just brass cased 8 millimeter ammo. And I think I have peeled all the price tags off. You can actually see where it used to be. Uh, but these were seven bucks a piece. Don't know when I bought them, but I bought a couple boxes. I like the little logo emblem that comes on them. This stuff is a little bit more common to see. I still see quite a bit of it floating around in gun shows. But this is your Eastern European ammunition here. Again, we have some information here. This was made in November of 1954. This is December of 1953. Um, I don't speak Russian or Ukrainian um, or wherever these may have been made. This would be... 15 rounds of brass case, copper jacketed, corrosive, eight Mauser. I had not opened this up, but this is a very unique little box. Um, so I had not opened this up until I actually made this display case. I knew what was in it just from memory, but um, we got a number here. This came out of a spam can of 7.62 by 25 Tokarev. Looks like we have some information here. Made in 1953. Don't know what the 32 is for. Or the 6 was probably the 
six at the top is probably the month. But yeah, this is seven six two. Probably cost the guy like a buck to buy that whole can of ammo back in the fifties. I don't really feel like taking this box back apart, but this is fifty rounds of seven six five French long, which is used in their submachine guns um, and. Uh, their pistols. I have a French model of 1935A, and uh, when I bought it, it came with this little pack of ammo. Uh, all of it is pretty much done for, but it was made in 1937 to 19 something. Sounds really stupid. The ammunition in this box is mixed, uh, which leads me to believe it was just somebody who had a box and had ammo, kind of scooped it all together, made 50 rounds out of it. But it, uh, steel case, steel bullet, corrosive, none of it works anymore, at least not in this. All right, got some more uh, Pakistani ammo. Um, this is 16 rounds of 30-inch ammo, or .30-inch ammo, MK4Z. Don't know what that really means. In two clips. Now, what gun has an eight-round clip? Would you look at that? 30-06 on M blocks. It looks gorgeous. I really don't want to pull it out of the box right now, but uh, it looks clean. I bet you it would shoot great. Probably be corrosive. Primers are sealed and everything. Yeah. I know this stuff is still floating around. I know some of it's cheap. Like I said, I personally just do not trust ammunition that comes out of the Middle East, um, just due to how much sa or, uh, sabotage ammunition is floating around. Got some other information here. 20th August 1966. That's probably when it was imported. That's the information there. This has 66 on it. Huh. Never mind. All right. We learned something together on video. Cool little bit of information there. And last on this little display case is this. Um, I have this still sealed up. So this is one of those cases where it's kind of good to go into your local gun store every once in a while. This is Israeli 8 Mauser. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Israelis got tons of German surplus guns after uh, the founding of their country and post-1945. Um, and they used a lot of German equipment, of course, all chambered in 8 Mauser. And so we have Hebrew. I don't... So this is written in their... Uh, their script. I'm, I'm not going to say anything offensive because I don't know what the name of that script is, and I'm not going to cut this open. But this, the story behind this is that when I walked in the gun store, the guy had a box of this, and they were in the process of writing on all of it, uh, like twenty bucks a box or something like that. I mean, literally, it was like two dollar signs, twenty bucks, eight mount. I mean, it was like I get what they're doing. They they want to make this stuff presentable to the average Joe walking in, but to me, I want to collect this ammunition the way it came out of the can. So I grabbed the box that looked like it was the least tore up, and I was like, whoa, 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 and let me buy this first before you keep drawing on it. And I said, oh, okay. And you know, being my local gun store that knows me, they cut me a discount. Um, but yeah, that's why I like I love collecting old ammunition before it gets all the writing and stuff done on it. And two bonus ones. These uh, couldn't fit on this display case. There is a top shelf up here, but it's snugly parked up underneath that. Uh, but anyways, this is some um, 7.62 by 54R rimmed. Clearly not from the United States, but it is a brass-cased bullet made in 1970. I don't know. I mean, it's clearly not hunting ammunition. This might be target ammo. This could be just their version of like plinking ammo. Like I said, I don't read Russian script. Probably made in 1970. All right, cool. I should really look at my boxes more often. And this is fun. So this is not even rare by any stretch of the imagination. This is just regular old 223556. Let's see. PMC 223-80556 ball. Boy, this looks awful familiar. Um, the reason why I bought this is, again, it was cheap and it's old. And I like how it came in this really cheesy camouflage box. Made to U.S. military specifications. I just think it's cute. 
So yeah, if you're ever interested in kind of expanding the diversity of your collection, I highly recommend getting into old ammo. It takes a little bit of patience. You sometimes really don't know what you're buying. Like I said, some of this stuff I learned with you as I was going over this video, but it's a great way to kind of get into something unique. It's easily displayed. It's a lot cheaper than buying guns and, um, and just the amount of variety in history that goes into these bullets is, it's just a lot of fun. Um, and if you're looking to invest, I mean, this stuff does go up in money over time. It probably won't sell like hotcakes, like finding a case of car 98 K's or something like that. But if you're not going to shoot it, eventually you will probably want to get rid of it to somebody. And there is somebody like myself who is willing to pay money to buy and collect old bullets. Anyways, this has been my video on my little arts and crafts project I did over the weekend. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.